Welcome back to the Unsubscribe Tribe. My name is Janet, also known as Rocky's Adventure over on the gram. I'm back with my good friend, Ben Lee. Ben, how you doing? I'm good. You know, same stuff, different days. So it just keeps going. I know. It's like Groundhog Day. Like I was at a restaurant last night and he was trying to remember the specials. He's like, what day is it? And I'm like, it's Groundhog Day, but <laughs> like it, every day seems the same. Well, especially in Ontario, you're uh, in still full lockdown still. Yeah, I don't think they're talking about letting up anytime soon. Um, like we're hovering around, I don't know, like what is it, like two thousand or twenty five hundred cases a day, mm-hmm. which is like low, like like an all time low for us for a long time. But yeah, they're, they're not talking about letting us go. Like I don't predict my gym's gonna open anytime soon. Uh, so I'm just still working at home when I can. Uh, restaurants, yeah, that that that's a long time coming away as well. Yeah. So yeah, we're just kind of chilling. Like, yeah, it's been interesting to see the effects on society, like through all this, like in terms of physical health and mental health. Yeah, well, like the mental health thing is absolutely insane. Like, I remember seeing stats on like the number of like suicides and like number of, like of, of like addiction related like overdose related sui- suicides or just deaths in general existed. And it just like spiked like a month or two into into, into lockdown. And I can think of like like a few of my friends, you know, like they they're they're unemployed and they have like nothing going on, but they're like, used to drinking and doing some coke. And, you know, then when they have nothing else to do during the day, it's just like, all right, I'm just going to drink and do more Coke, drink and do more Coke. And this comes and turns into a really, really vicious cycle because then like you're not going outside. You can't go outside anyways. Like, you know, like with a few of my friends in particular, like one of their big things to get their mental health in check is to, is to exercise, do something physically intense. Yep. And you know you're not going to do that. You're know, going to go for like a one hour walk, uh, especially if you live downtown. Like you know, like he's used to like lifting weights and, mm-hmm. and things like that. So it's very hard to actually replicate that without an actual gym open. And when you're living in an apartment downtown, uh, you're that that's even uh, more impossible because then where are you actually going to put your weights at if you buy one? Well, even just like being in the apartment, like I talk to people that are, you know, sitting at their desk all day. So they're not even getting the spatial movement that you would get in a normal, you know, workday, say like, you know, pre-COVID when you're getting up and you're walking to meeting rooms and you're getting up, you're stuck in that one place. So like, I think that there's these unseen physical effects, you know, talking about you know, being able to work out, that's the way a lot of people deal with stress. I know that I used to do that until I hurt my back. And then, you know, it's really hard to go and try to like work it off um, when you're injured. But I think that that's, you know, where a lot of people, especially men, kind of learn how to deal with their feelings. I know that's what I would do. I call it fuck the shit workout. And I'm just like, fuck the shit. But when I hurt my back, I couldn't do that. So how would I manage my emotions? And a lot of people turn to drinking. And I think that there's something to be said about it. It does, you know, help to take the edge off. Um, It helps you to kind of like, you know, loosen your lips and say things maybe that you were afraid to say before, although they probably come out wrong. Um, But it's a coping mechanism that a lot of people turn to because they're just not having this physical release of those emotions. Yeah. I remember like there was one memory that really stands out to me was I used to live in Ingersoll, Ontario, which is like, how do I, it's, it, it, so it has about like, its population is about 10,000 people in the middle of nowhere. Like it, it's between like London and Waterloo, I suppose, mm-hmm. um, kind of around Woodstock. And yeah, just like, like really small, dry town, um, like a lot of crackheads in like downtown area. Um, but yeah, and just, it's not, 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 not a fun town to be in, but anyways, I remember having to drop by one of the foreman's houses after work one day and he's just back there like drinking a beer with one of the other guys from work and he's like hey Ben like you want a beer I'm like and and I said I would decline I said no thanks and he's like looked at me and just kept looking and the next day he was like like you're the first person who's ever come to my house and turned a beer down. You're such a weirdo, um, like making chicken and not drinking beer. Wow. (laughs) So resourceful. But I I guess I didn't realize like that, that's like, that's the, that's the culture in there. 
You know what's funny is yeah. like while you're talking about this, I think back to our previous conversation and talking about the cultural differences. Um, specifically, you know, you mentioned a lot of European countries and it's funny, I got into kind of a little bit of a comment warrior, especially for my friend Ken Kanakin over on the Swiss video flicks. Um, and, you know, Ken posted a video of, um, I think she's an IFBB like, you know, champion and she was showing lunges, like walking lunges. And this guy just comments and he's like, those aren't lunges. This is a split squat, like blah, blah, you know, and uh, he obviously didn't listen to the audio, but, you know, he was clearly from some Eastern European country. Um, and it's funny because I've been thinking about like testosterone and like, you know, it's managed by like winning, you know, stuff like that. Winning helps to boost testosterone. And so we see all these people in the comments section. They're like, you're losing. And I'm like, no, you are because you're wasting your life on fucking Instagram because no one wants to listen to you. But then look at the whole, you know, Easter, like, isn't Russia like one of the places where people die of drinking at a young age, primarily males? Yeah, they could look at that, uh, look at that Russian Facebook Instagram page. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You've been sending me that for years. It is <laughs> a very interesting um, experiment on humanity, I guess. It's like being in a whole, whole other world. Like it's just such like a, like a ruthless or savage place to, to live in. Yeah. It's funny. I remember one of the um, pictures there, you know, kind of switching to the female body ideals. These women had implants that were like, ginormous like absolute like yeah there's implants which are now coming out as being absolute fucking poison for your body because there's so many women that are sick with these but it's really easy to get a man to spend money if you have bigger boobs like this is the binary world that we've been raised in and these chicks have these massive knockers and like somebody in the comment section was like why would you say like they were talking to me because i'm like they obviously got those tits for you know to serve a man like and they're like why would you say that like you can't drive with them you can't put a seatbelt on with them you know women that have breasts that size uh you know will get them reduced but we learn really quickly that it's very easy to manipulate a man with your sexuality and i think that that kind of binary norm has again created a men's health issue like it's just so easy to entrap a guy with plastic and the whole transgender identity part is completely blowing that up yeah yeah it's like the one thing i always thought about like when especially when it came to like i guess like 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 women in plastic surgery was like you know like in wrestling or like in wwe like like back in the day or like in like the 2000s like the women were there just to be like the eye candy and every single one of them had like insane amounts of plastic surgery done mm -hmm. i think to the point where like when they moved like like nothing else like moved and like that was always my impression of like really of like just like excessive like plastic surgery or just strong women i mean for me like i don't think like i feel like i have definitely mixed feelings about crossfit i don't think that the average person should be doing it but i appreciate what it's done for weightlifting culture and i think showcasing strong women because like to your point those were the media images that we saw of strong women and it was like Ugh. like i just remember being like i do not want to look like that i'll go with the <laughs> thin model look because that was just basically all we saw yeah yeah it, it's interesting with, with, with crossfit as well because i think i mean the funny part is i think that's what i actually drew a lot of guys as well is because when they started showing like like the the woman doing crossfit and they're wearing the booty shorts and like they're looking like good all, a lot of the, that flocked a lot of guys over mm -hmm. like and i think i mean it happens in in every in every thing you everything you would you would do as well i think that's always like a, like a, like a driving determinant of that I remember like I have one friend, I, I won't, I won't name them, but he would tell me about how like, you know, he used to go to this certain gym when he was in high school, but not actually do anything there. Like it would just be him and his friends and just be like staring at like at girls' asses, like as they're working out. <laughs> Which is what we see a lot of. You look like a man on that Instagram is like that one woman that, you know, posted that video, I think of a guy who is taking a video of her 
you know, yeah. super invasive. And, um, but that's the thing is I feel like, you know, we've objectified women to this point where it's like, you've got this save the princess, you know, syndrome. Funny enough, uh, last weekend, um, you know, I woke up early and started looking at Bible verses about women. Um, and it is completely objectifying women. Like there's, there's no better thing for you to get than a good, a good wife. <laughs> um, there's a lot of great things that you can get besides a good wife, actually. And then basically the laundry list for women, I mean, it didn't stop at laundry. You'd like cooking, you know, don't upset your man, like that kind of stuff. And I was just like, wow, no wonder I was suffering from internalized misogyny for so <laughs> long. And now I'm completely on the other side, like, cause I understand, like, I'm at this point right now where I'm getting sexually harassed for free. So I, I'm like, why don't I just get paid for it? Because it's really easy to make money off of these dudes. Yeah. I remember like when I was in one of my first co-op jobs and like, you know, like you get like the email chains that go around. Yeah. And one of them was like an article from like a 1950s like good housekeeping or something magazine mm -hmm. and it's like the article titled like how to how to get a man or like how to keep your man mm -hmm. and it's always these bullet points about like you know like you should like you know don't don't talk don't voice your opinion too much like let yeah. your man think that he's in he's in charge um when he gets home like be sure to have a smile and put on something nice because he's had such a long day at work he needs you to take this he doesn't need your stress and it got sent around the office i remember this like this one woman was like really really like upset because it was my boss who sent out the email mm -hmm. and then my boss was like oh like wow like she almost had like her heart broken by like another man before <laughs> well i think it's like very surprising we see younger kids today that kind of don't understand the systemic like gender issues that are there i'm just pulling up like the bible verses that i I, a woman should learn in quietness and full submission. Uh, I am not fucking quiet. Like when I learn, I'm always asking questions. And for some people it drives them nuts, but I was watching a video um, seminar from John Berardi and he fully encourages question asking during a seminar. So I'm like, cool. I'm like, I'm at the level of like, I want to learn from John Berardi. Oh, also women will be saved through childbearing if they continue in faith, love and holiness with propriety um a wife of noble character who could find she is worth far more than rubies like absolutely poisonous toxic gender norms and just like setting these expectations that kind of i think have led into this toxic media and like just commercialism that exploits people like both men and women you know you teach people how to treat you um but i can see it's just easy a lot of people are on this algorithm but it's becoming i think like a serious health issue in terms of mental and physical health mm -hmm. yeah like the one thing that always, you know, really puzzled me was the way the image of health and fitness and nutrition are marketed between mm -hmm. the two sides. Because, like, you know, like, I know with all of us, when we first started working out, you start reading the magazines and you, you start believing in the supplement ads when they're doing, like, the before oh, and God. after pictures. Like, and, and, My and head hurts thinking about day. this. <laughs> But like you think about, uh, I think about like how like it was marketed to me and it was all about stuff like you can get like super jacked or super ripped in like six weeks, increase your testosterone by like 437%. And they would cite this super obscure study that had nothing to do with it mm -hmm. as their thing. But then for women, like it's almost like the, like the other way around. It's like, look more feminine, get bigger boobs. And and, yeah. and it, even, it even trickles down into like other stuff. Like, for example, I was talking to one of my clients, like my own online training clients. And we were talking about, like, she was asking me about multivitamins. And I was like, well, like, what have you seen? And she talked about like the women's one a day. And she's like, oh, like what's the difference between the women's and the men's one a day? And I was like, I think one's is there to like scam you more and take more of your money. Mm -hmm. Cause like, like what the hell? Like, and there was like a, like a female protein powder where I guess, you know, like the regular protein powder maybe had too much testosterone in it. So the women can Well, you know, it. 
as you're talking about this, I'm thinking about soy and the estrogenic properties that are basically, I mean, that everybody's consuming anyways, like they don't realize it, but <laughs> like that has been, you know, a substance soy, like the veg, it's been associated, I think with vegetarian protein. And because like a lot of people that feel masculine need that like carnivore, diet you know like oh my gosh that one guy with the carnivore diet it's like he is going to just die on he's like vegetables are toxic i'm like mm -hmm, no they're not but like this binary view of it is toxic and soy then you know has become this like associated with like i don't know femininity but also it's full of estrogen and it's it's super toxic mm. Yeah, it's it's funny how that all kind of worked itself out. I'm not even sure like how that even got into like the vernacular of like how we see things. But like I remember reading an article that soy became popular because it was super cheap to mm -hmm. produce. Mm -hmm. And it just and it had like a good enough um, nutrient profile. But I think they were like feeding it to like livestock and then they tried feeding it to humans. And it took hold. And I think that, like just the marketing of it as a health food is what really got it kicked off. Cause like, I remember like, you know, like way back in the day when before healthy eating was, you know, so pushed, was pushed so heavily, mm -hmm. quote unquote, healthy eating, like, you know, they would always make fun of like vegans as like eating, like eating tofu and like, mm -hmm. like all that super bland crap. So well, the vegan thing is interesting because again, you get people that are just like vegan and I've talked to guys that, you know, go on dates with people that try to um, convince them that, you know, being vegan is the only way to go. Um, I did go on a date with a guy who is a vegan um, and he actually is a coach and he's known for his approach, which could be nature. It could be nurture because he has like a father who was into it, but it was interesting because he told me his his uh, athlete said, I didn't know that you could be a coach without yelling at people, you know, like it's a very like high testosterone, but I think of like how, I think there's a lot of men that are dealing with hormone issues, you know, because of the influx of all these, you know, estrogens and, you know, just screwing up our endocrine system. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's it's funny how that works out. It's like I remember, like in in like the UFC, like all like a lot of the fighters who came from Greg Jackson's gym, mm -hmm. like GSP and Rashad Evans and um, John Jones, and what and apparently uh, based on people who also knew like Greg Jackson was that like his coaching style was just super like he would never get like overly excited, like he wouldn't get upset. Mm -hmm you just like keep everything in a nice calm tone and just like talk to his guys. And I remember like, I forget, I forget which fight it was uh, with GSP, like they're in between rounds and like the cameras in their corner and, and Greg's like, all right, George, like that was a great job you did in there. You should be really proud of yourself. Okay, so for this round- Like a soccer one, mom. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, he's just like, just, just like talking to him, just like, you know, like he's like, like, a, like a child. And he's just like keeping him calm. And he's like, and he's like, here's what I would, here's what I would adjust. Let's work on this, this and that. Other than that, you're doing a great, like have fun in there. And yeah, it's just like, like super relaxed. And I remember talking to Stu about that. Um, like Stu McGill, like my, my prof, uh, when I was in, in grad school and he was saying, yeah, like, that's like, like, uh, that's his style. Like he doesn't like to overly excite his fighters because he knows that like, when you're on edge, like you're just like, like a little, like too, too, a little too tense and jumpy at times. Mm -hmm. So like, it's yeah, funny, totally. like the Eastern, I think like the martial arts scene, especially like you have like the Eastern influence on there. And there's so much about Eastern medicine that I am just finding to be completely true in my own body like energy meridians liver like all this stuff that's like in my feet and acupressure points that's showing up in my body and i'm working on that psoas which is my core muscle and i'm becoming stronger than ever by dealing with this but i'm having these emotional releases at the same time and it's funny because you know people like charles poliquin like right before he passed away he was really big into the yin and the yang of training um unfortunately i think that like mma's popularity people have exploited it and they've really missed out on i think the you know teachings of eastern philosophy that accompany um mma
Yeah, yeah, I think, you know, like everyone just wants to go. And I think that's, you know, just, that's just the culture that's promoted around here, especially like, you know, like what'll get you likes on Instagram or what'll pass, what will get picked up on Instagram algorithm. It's just stuff that's, you know, like fast paced and exciting. So everyone wants the yang. Everyone forgets about the yin side of things. And, you know, it, it's, it's funny because like as well, like going back to the world of martial arts, then like, you know, there's other coaches, like especially in the kickboxing world, where you're just constantly trying to kill each other like when you guys train, like, like there's like a really, like I'm in kickboxing is really well known, like Jim and like um, somewhere in Holland. And like, they just like, and every time they train, they just go and try to kill each other, but they also produce like really elite level guys. But I think it's a, it's a case of, you know, those guys just happen to be anomalies and they're just rising to the top and just like, you're taking all your eggs and throwing them against the wall and saving the ones that don't break so it's funny how that works and even like going into like other sports like more organized sports like the olympics mm -hmm. um i was told uh, by someone who worked uh with the chinese olympic program because i mean we, we we hear about how dominant the chinese are in like a few select events like uh like gymnastics is one um uh weightlifting is is, is, is a big one and and and, and, a, few, and a few others and I remember learning that it's like, it's not because there's like a special program or something like really special that they do is that they just have brutal training standards and the biggest population in the world to draw from. So they're just literally playing a numbers game and just literally trying to, literally trying to break yeah. everything. And like, you know, like for every Olympic gold medalist that you get out of this, you might get a thousand people that could have been them but didn't survive the process. Are they having the next Winter Olympics? Is that what I recall? Um, I don't know. Like I was talking to a few people in the industry and they're saying that Olympic trials are going on right now. Uh, I know like apparently like 2021 US Olympic trials are happening like um, now or like in the next month or so. Um, Cause it does like, apparently Japan is still moving forward with having an Olympics this year. Mm, that's so interesting kind of summer olympics but i don't know because this is before they announced that state of emergency or whatever the hell they called it because now japan is apparently having like a bit of a problem with uh with their covid issue oh geez well the reason i say that is like i was in ontario on a noram race volunteering and i believe it was either the korean team or the chinese team um and these kids uh had been selected from the best of the best and they didn't know how to ski like and they were with and so China or what I'm fairly sure it was China now that I remember I got a text message with a picture from a sunrise um and the coach like didn't speak um Chinese and like would just be like good boy good girl and like try to like coach them because they had the language barrier but China was just like we're gonna go pick up the best coach that we could find from you know the Canadian ski cross team because Canada is a leader in ski cross um and so he was I think in China doing like the test events and uh, I was you know seeing the meals and stuff like that and the training site but that's exactly what they did they picked these random kids up that didn't ski and made you know put them on like the high performance program because they're gonna show up in the Olympics <laughs> Yeah, like that's the whole MO is that they just outsource to the best talent uh, or, or to the best skilled coaches and just have them train like en masse. Um, like I have, a, I, I heard these insider stories and it's like the mentality apparently is 10 silvers are worse than one gold. Ooh, burn. Wow. This adult motivational quotes. Yeah, I'm going to make that so one into not, a meme. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's hilarious. But it's crazy how the Eastern philosophy plays. Yeah, like, and like that's like, and like his, like his, my, my friend there. Yeah, like, well, I think, you know, like with the, with, with the Chinese, they, they are in a very interesting scenario and it's, and we can really trace it back to basically World War II. Because like, I mean, up until like, like, the, like up until the end of World War II for the whole night, like 20th century, like China was like, and all Asia was, was getting like fucked by Japan for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. Because Japan was really going in there. Like they, they annexed Korea, which is why you get a lot of ethnic Koreans who live in Japan because, you know, during uh, or the early 1900s, they were just shipping them back to Korea or back to Japan. 
and then Japan took part of China and that's what led into World War II and then a lot of like the atrocities that the Japanese did to the Chinese and that's why a lot of like the older generation hate each other like like they were like a lot of Chinese older Chinese will refuse to buy Japanese products like Japanese cars and electronics but uh but yeah um but the whole thing is that you know so after like communism took over it became like a like a massive rebuilding process and for a lot of it you just had to tough it out because you know like living under communism is never any fun no matter how much like the, the kids nowadays try to make it seem cool but <laughs> Have you seen that? Like, like, like socialism is like, it's like, it's like gaining, gaining steam again. Um, but I guess it, it happens. It happens. It happens in cycles. I, I, I suppose. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, like, but like, basically, basically the, the, the Chinese were indoctrinated to the idea that we're all going to sacrifice so that the nation can can prosper. Mm -hmm. And that's added to the come with. But that being said, they're like, if every person contributes, will be that much stronger. So it's a very strong drive to like, you know, like always be the best and always work, which is why, I mean, I have, it's in every Asian culture as well. Mm -hmm. But then this is why you see like, you know, like rates of suicide in Japan and Korea are like freaking through the roof because of that pressure. Even at like at Waterloo, like where I went to university, apparently talking to one of my friends uh, who worked in housing there, um, a very like dirty little secret is like the number of suicides uh, per semester that occur um, on like in their in the residences. Really? And, yeah, like it'll it'll be there at, the, there'll at least be you know like two or three a semester apparently. Oh God, that makes me feel sick. Yeah, and it's and it's always like 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 the foreign students and like you know like they're in, they're usually in like math, accounting, engineering, computer science. Uh, very high pressure programs and, and they're not performing and they're re and like they're all thinking shit like this is like what I'm the end for. of my I'm life like, like this is what I've yeah. been driving told I've been driven towards you know what that's like interesting because it's very much like what happened in my experience with my family because we were very much pressured to go to school which is great I love school you know I'm finding now that that's what I want to continue to pursue um but my you know sibling was forced into a program that he wasn't interested in and he you know felt a lot of pressure and it would had a really detrimental effect on his mental health and going back to what you're saying about suicides like this is again i think a men's health problem is that you know aside from you know china or you know asian countries having these suicide rates i mean in the us it's not any better we're all in pharmaceuticals dealing with these chronic symptoms that continue to persist because we refuse to get to the root cause which might mean resting you know and going against like that no pain no gain but it's such an outdated i think um just a gender norm thing because you know back in the day we needed you know to divide and conquer and so we needed men to do most of the physical labor because they were stronger and you know i think this day and age you know for, we've got we're dealing with a lot of different evolutions social evolutions gender evolutions where we don't need to have a we're not binary anymore we're really a rainbow spectrum and you know just even going this morning on instagram I saw, I put my gender pronouns in, which is something I wouldn't have done six months ago, but it's now like, it's in business now, you know, this, these gender issues are rolling over into the business world. And it's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out for people's career. They're so stuck in their perspective and they're, you know, online, you know, just trolling and you might end up at a company. I was watching this incredible video about a guy that finds old um, social media posts from people. This woman was up for a job, you know, that was a $250,000 compensation point. And she had this video that she deleted and he found it and she didn't get hired because that is a career limiting move. Like don't like, like it's, it, people keep on saying it's cancel culture, but it's going to be a human rights issue at your workplace, probably within five years. Wow. So like, what do you do if you're like, you know, you had Twitter when you were 15 and you're posting obnoxious stuff all day, you fast forward and now you're like, you're 30 going for a promotion and they find stuff from when you're 15 years old. 
and you know, frankly, people will find the same thing for me. Like I got into conversations because I really lacked the understanding and the perspective. I was ignorant, you know, and I think that that's, you know, again, the basis of our podcast. We're the unsubscribe tribe. If you don't like us, fucking unsubscribe. Like we make mistakes, but we're here to actually, we're truth seekers, you know? And I think that that is the interesting thing where we're talking about this whole masculine versus feminine, the win, the I'm right, you're wrong. And we're in a position where we're both like, we just want to learn and being stuck in right or wrong will limit your progress. And, uh, you know, I think that'll play out in a lot of different ways when it comes to gender identity in the next few years and how it's going to be integrated into everyday life, whether that's bathrooms and change rooms and you feeling comfortable with another person who's gender you know you that it, you feel threatened by the idea that the gender spectrum exists because that means that your identity and what you've based it on is subject to change mm-hmm. yeah it's it, it's really interesting how the business world took hold of this but sometimes i wonder if initially took hold just because of like what's the term um when they're they're trying to pretend that they care but they don't yep. really yeah and that's why all the big corporates are like forcing everyone to put their pronouns in and like i i still remember when i when i first started getting emails and people in their signatures would have their pronouns and i was like you don't you don't have to tell me like i don't i don't, I don't really care to be honest um well <laughs> i i made the mistake like a couple months ago where there was somebody emailing me called bobby and i thought it was a somebody that identified as a male and it was just a you know that was her name oops <laughs> like and it wasn't and it wasn't a trans thing it wasn't a gender identity thing it was just that that was her name and i assumed it and it was just like right in my face of like Oh yeah. Like this just happens even for, you know, people who don't, you know, identify on the spectrum. This is for regular names. Like what if your name's Alex or, you know, like guy's name, Ashley. Or, yes. You know. I've thought about that, about how, you know, having a gender neutral name will affect your success, um, you know, in your career, you know? So when you're naming your kids, something like, you know, flutter by princess or, you know, Apple, <laughs> they might get beat up in the playground and then they might get beat up when they're emailing people because of how they're perceived I think but that's the thing is it's just the gender identity question is really just blowing up all these ideas that we had in gender about gender norms but also exposing a lot of the you know predisposed um, ideals that we have that are oppressive you know and I think that like there's just a spectrum of people that can identify with you've been treated differently based on how you look. Mm -hmm. Do you remember it's Pat from Saturday night live in the early nineties? No, I forget. It was a woman who played him or her, or it was basically this character named Pat who was, and they didn't know if it was a man or a woman and I know the movie, I mean, the, the, the SNL skits are just Pat getting into funny situations and just like being like a klutz. But then they made a full length movie of It's Pat. And the whole point of the movie is his neighbor trying to figure out if Pat's a man or a woman. Mm-hmm. And like for like an hour and a half, that is like, that's the plot of, 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 the, of the film. And it's just the neighbor trying to devise like ways to like figure out if he's like a a guy or a girl. Like, push my nuts. And the neighbor's like, oh, it's it's, it's, it's a man. And then Pat reached into their pockets and he's like, oh, I was saving these for later. And it's like, uh, it's like a a bag full of walnuts. (laughs) (laughs) That's hilarious. It makes me think back to like the commercial that I saw that made me fall in love with marketing was a commercial about a financial company and it was talking it was clarity investments actually i can remember this i think it was during a super bowl that's why i fell in love with super bowl ads and it was a gentleman that was going to the bathroom and he was looking at the signs of the bathroom and he couldn't figure out which gender each was and so they were like clarity investments and then somebody came out and you could not identify the gender of the person that came out and i thought that that was so funny and that's why i got into marketing but The whole thing with marketing is they completely target you based on your gender. I mean, I've been targeted for being a surrogate parent, like mother. Oh God. Like really? I'm like, no, that is a hard no for me, but I'm apparently breeding age. 
<laughs> it's it's funny how those like Facebook or Google ads work, the algorithm works, and you just fit the criteria, so just like cram it at you. And it's it's scary how specific it gets. Um, going back to marketing, you ever seen like the progressive insurance ads that are on TV to, like nowadays? No. Or is it progressive or what's the other one? State Farm is there, Geico, um, Lizard Identities. I, I can't remember the, like, the, the name, but um, so I see them on American TV whenever I watch Friday Night Smackdown. In between uh, pharmaceutical on, ads? On Fox. Yeah. In between the drug ads, actually. Yeah. Uh, and it's like, it's like, the, it's like for home and auto insurance. And the tagline is that, you know, when you, when you buy your own house, you end up becoming just like your parents. So it's like a service from a psychologist about how to not become your parents when you, when you own your own place. So it's like, it's like a bunch of 30 year olds dressing like they're in, like they're in their sixties and like forgetting like how to tweet or like, what's a hashtag or that sounds hilarious. I tried, like I tried like reaching out to my friend, but I ended up posting it to my Facebook status. <laughs> <laughs> And then go to a hardware store and then telling the guy like, no, he doesn't want to hear your opinion. And oh, yeah. Doing, going through all that stuff. And like the one girl brings in like the sign, like no fussing, no cussing, no mussing. And like the psychologist takes them, throws it in the garbage. Hilarious. Yeah, it's funny because like I grew up with a very limited circle in terms of like role models and, you know, just home being homeschooled. I spent most of my time with my mom and I really had it in my head that I would be like pregnant and married by the age of 28 like she was. So definitely not on that program. And, you know, like that's why I really like I post a lot on social media. I don't really think that I'm anything special, but I think that a lot of the stuff that I've been able to accomplish is pretty special. And I want to show other people what's possible because I didn't see that stuff growing up, you know, growing up. That's a picture of me as a skiing cowboy. Like that, I didn't think that that existed. And then like, that's what I ended up doing, you know, because I, I ended up actually really removing myself from my family home. And that allowed me to just, you know, all these times I've moved, I've been able to establish um, a new identity, but like new routines too. Like we get stuck in our habits and we have all this outdated programming. You know, I've been thinking about how, how often do we update the software on our phones, but a lot of people are, you know, stuck in outdated programming that served them as a kid. And then to your point, like the drug, you know, the drug ads, you know, we continue to have this, you know, ideal push, like no pain, no gain, you know, keep at it. Don't be a wuss. Don't be a cry baby. And then they sell us drugs that make us sick for us to be able to maintain that standard. Like it's just, it's really driving me nuts these days. It's like the, the drug ads are ridiculous. And like the way they're marketed as well, like the, the commercial is just so like corny. <laughs> Then like they're just like left. frolicking through a field as they're going over like you may get diarrhea your kidneys could explode <laughs> like you could die did like you, did you ever watch American Dad that cartoon no so like they do one episode where Stan gets addicted to crack and they and then like they play the scene like a drug ad where like he's like all oh, he's like because like he what's the like oh so what is it he is so Stan gets a cold and he goes, he doesn't want to go to the pharmacy. So some guy in the street sells him what he thinks is cold medication, but in reality is crack. So mm. he smokes it and feels great and he keeps using it at thinking it's a uh, cold medication and eventually gets addicted to it. So finally when he finally breaks and becomes a full-on addict they turn it into this drug ad and it's like do you feel irritable normal um sleepy like sleepy energetic or just plain not high maybe it's about time you try crack and like they like, you know like they, they 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 do it like in a spray paint style logo with like the chemical name underneath yeah and like the entire ad is like stan like frolicking with a dog in a field him older dancing with his granddaughter on standing on his shoes, like playing tennis with like his wife. And it's, and he's like, and they're like, crack me call like in, in, insomnia, heartburn, um, gay for pay or, or, or long prison sentences. Like if you feel like, if you, if you feel the need to steal, do not as it may recur, occur in brutal raping in prison. 
<laughs> yeah, that uh, that is true. You know, like it's funny that you say that because I I think of like all the different ways that this plays out in society. I like you know hearing um, in the seminar I was watching on that Swiss, Swiss video flicks about. Um, fitness models in Australia being on meth, you know, and then thinking like, you know, to your point, like it's drugs are a coping mechanism, you know, but I think that what we don't realize is that we're ingesting a lot of drugs on a regular basis that are marketed to us as health products. And I think about like, if you're a fitness model, let's say you're, you want to make it in the industry, you are probably on fat burners. And so you're in a chronic state of fight or flight. Cause you're a Fedrin, you know, because you're just getting pumped and you're getting primed for that. And then let's so you get fake boobs like you're just in like a constant state of like toxicity and yeah meth probably would relieve a lot of those symptoms of you know the fact that you are exploiting your body to oh somebody asked me the other day if i would ever do a show and i wanted to hit him like i just am like that is the dumbest idea like fitness shows are absolutely the worst thing like i do i look like i like eating vaseline no <laughs> but like we but we celebrate them you know i, I want to i haven't picked up an oxygen magazine in a long time but talking about you know these ads that go from like you know this is what you should do this is a cake recipe here's some fat burners you know this is a model that's 130 pounds no she's not she's not fucking 130 pounds man they lie about that shit oh just drives me nuts yeah that's the the whole like ideal of of bodybuilding is 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 really is really funny like I, i've known a couple of people who competed in figure and bodybuilding and you look at like the diet like leading up like to that final month and it's just and they have no scary. friends first of all they have no friends because no one wants to eat with you and you're like sp and you're spending all your time boiling chicken yeah and just super irritable like as a result just like to strip away like the last last bits of fat like it's absolutely insane yeah yeah your brain gets super depleted and then we celebrate it right we see these pictures they get into you know they do a fitness shoot and then they become a spokesmodel for some fat burner that goes and fucks everybody up <laughs> it reminds me of the time when ephedra got banned because all the baseball players died and like they were, the, I think Joe Rogan talks about this a lot because this is before my time. This is before I started working out or it was around, but I just didn't know about it. Mm -hmm. And like all like this, like the fat burners, like hydroxy cut, ripped fuel and all these crazy other supplements all had ephedra and caffeine um, in it. And it was legal and over the counter. And like Joe Rogan, be talking about like you would take a couple of tap like pills and you just be like, like on, like on meth, like while you're going through your workouts, cause you're so just like, like amped up. Uh, and then I think eventually I remember watching, I remember watching sports nets, like, like one time, like a long time ago. And he talked about a bunch of baseball players dropping dead because they were taking like handfuls of like ripped fuel or other like ephedra based products and going up for spring training in like 110, 120 degree heat and not like refueling, like, like not like replace replenishing like water or electrolytes. So a whole bunch of them ended up like getting really sick or dying from that. They banned ephedra uh, based supplements. And then the every time you say that, I feel personally attacked. I'm like, oh, like I'm just thinking of like back when you and I were on the fitness forum and I had started my ephedra caffeine stack and I couldn't fucking yeah. sleep every night. Well, then they unbanned it a couple of years later because they found that like I think they decided that the ephedrine wasn't the culprit. It was more like the, like the more so the poor habits of the of the players that caused the death. Mm -hmm. Like so, going to the bar and getting a Red Bull vodka after you do a whole bunch of ephedra and caffeine yeah and like you've been like even like sweating for hours out in the 120 degree florida heat yeah so yeah that that's like that that's that's not a good time so they like unbanned it and that's why you could buy ephedra uh, over the counter and you still can for like five bucks a bottle if you go out to like popeyes or whatever if it's still i feel like if popeyes i know gnc recently went down but you know Thinking of like what I used to do then and what I do now, I saw a seminar with Charles Poliquin talking about, you know, the benefits of CBD. And it's been amazing to see the cannabis industry explode. I know personally for me, I enjoy smoking sativas and working out and I find it helps me to feel my body 
better. And when I'm able to feel my body better, I'm able to address the structural inefficiencies that I've been suffering with and I'm getting stronger as a result. Yeah, like there's something to be said about that, having like better like proprioception or kinesthetic awareness. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like maybe perhaps for like ultra intense exertions, maybe not the best idea. Yep. But like if you're just if you're just trying to like go around, get get moving, feel yourself move, it's fantastic stuff for that. Um, you know, you can even think about like I remember in the world of MMA when Nick Diaz fought Takanori Gomi in Pride, and they fought in Las Vegas. And Diaz beat Gomi with this crazy submission that like apparently only one other person ever has ever pulled off. And later on, they overturned it to a no contest because Diaz popped for weed. And his THC levels were so high, he was, it was basically like he was stoned during the fight. Yeah. So how do like, do we have any information on like how that compromises performance? Like I'm thinking back to like Canada and the snowboard guy, Ross Rugby. Regbiati or forget I forget his oh, yeah, name I yeah. think he now okay. owns a cannabis company <laughs> but it's interesting to see like and this is plant medicine like that's the thing this is plant medicine this is not big pharma but you know being in British Columbia a it's interesting to see the difference in attitude um in British Columbia versus you know having grown up in Toronto mm -hmm. the change in legislation and now the explosion of growth as I think we continue to see the science then the results that are showing that there's so many beneficial properties in this plant yeah it seems that the, like the pacific northwest seemed to really like welcome this concept uh for some reason better than everyone else maybe indigenous cultures i mean it's funny like i just think back to colonialism and this is just white people stomping all over you know the indigenous culture and you know they are very much respectful of the land you know kind of like playing into that vegetarian aspect but i mean their hunting practices are obviously a part of their culture too, but I think it's become like evident that there's like a big shift coming where we're, we can learn so much, or at least that's what I'm feeling. I do follow a woman um, out of Kamloops. Her name is Elaine. She wrote a book about calling my spirit back, you know, in terms of her journey growing up in this generational trauma that we've inflicted on indigenous people and her getting out of her alcoholism and now she's really speaking out about it and I'm just learning so much from her I love it but she posted the most amazing um plant the other day uh bitter root which helps your liver and your kidneys and which are affected by drinking but you know we shut down i'm thinking this morning of how they used to burn witches at the stake you know and they they really had some tools you know and that treat physiological conditions that are caused as a result of this colonialism and this capitalist push mm. yeah it's you know I, I bet there's there's so much lost knowledge or lost information that just didn't you know survive over the years that would be really beneficial nowadays because i mean like like the indigenous people survived on this continent for thousands upon thousands of years like way like like an order of magnitude more than when the settlers came mm -hmm. so they've been finding ways to like prosper but i bet you know through over the over the years especially you know when things got taken over you know one of the things that like uh more that the invading people will do is to like burn your knowledge or yeah uh, so and remove any trace of you wow um because i can think about as well like you know you think and about, then hand like, out bibles yeah and it's like all right well yeah it's, it's like oh your religion is wrong you got to worship this god here's the book about it if if we catch you worshiping your other god well we're gonna we're gonna kill you well and, and it's like right now like in israel there's like i've got a friend that's in a bomb shelter right now. Like you look at how that plays out in your real life. Like she's posting videos on Instagram of her in a bomb shelter with people in Israel. Like, because we have this divide in religion. Yeah, it's like, it's wild. Like it's been all over history. Like I can think about, like when I think about like lost works of history, I always think about the library of Alexandria in Alexandria, Egypt and how, you know, like it, Alexandria is a, is a port city and apparently, you know, in the, in the old days, anytime you had a ship come in, they would like look at like, you know, like what does like the writing, what, what books does it have, any articles and they would make copies or just take them. Wow. Them the library. The so original have, fitness forum. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so like they had all these like manuscripts from people all over, like I guess like their world, 
who were coming in here and apparently it was just this massive library of like anything to do from like literature and poetry to science to math to astronomy and later on i think it was when the romans invaded they just burned it up burned they burned down the library including the city and all that stuff is just like gone forever like now no sounds like instagram censorship right there like that's <laughs> like what's going on right now yeah and like this is like like the very funny part about like what's going on right now because a lot of people claim, you know, like, oh, like, you know, we, we don't, we don't want to be run by fascists, blah, blah, blah. Well, don't forget the fascists were also out there burning, burning books and burning certain literatures, as were other, like, anytime someone tries to take over, they destroy the remnants of the old, which is, which is what ISIS was doing as well, right? Like, they were going to, like, to, like, ancient sites uh, throughout the Middle East, and just, like, in the, the, and, like, demolishing those. Um, so like this is what every it, it, it's, it's a pattern mm -hmm. so when you see like this this group that's in its supposed for, for the supposed social justice um, I'm sure you know a lot of people on that side are you know have very like altruistic intentions but the way they're doing it it's kind of like you know you are now becoming like what you are rallying against yeah well and the thing the thing too is that it's the there is danger of misinformation i mean like look at the spread of hitler's um uh, propaganda from jail like this is again who you listen to matters yeah you know? like he was like right i think like he was like the he came at the right place right time because like the germans were reeling from losses during world war one and they needed a scapegoat. And then Hitler was like, oh, us Germans are strong. It's the Jews that are the reason. There's like a Simpsons episode about this as well, somewhat. I was waiting for the Simpsons reference. There we go. Everybody where, that's playing the drinking game where Ben mentions uh, Simpsons, you can get pretty drunk during conversations. But for some reason, he's been throwing a whole bunch of curveballs like Family Guy and like the the American insurance guy. commercial. Oh, yeah, the insurance. I'll just send those to you because they're they're hilarious. But yeah, like in this one Simpsons, like they, impl they implement like a bear patrol. And as a result, a bear tax is like is is uh implemented, and all the towns people get mad. And so the mayor needs a scapegoat. So he blames the bear patrol tax or high taxes on illegal immigrants. And says like it's the immigrants' fault. Your reason your taxes are high. Is, like go get mad at them. So that turns into them wanting to like to like deport like all the illegal, illegal immigrants, and that turns into its own thing in the episode. But yeah, yeah. you know, like 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 like, like, like such a similar concept. So actually, funny that you mentioned that. I uh, was out on a walk yesterday, and I um was around a bear and i wanted to see the bear really badly some people stopped and told me about it and like luckily i had my bear spray on me um but uh it's funny my dad i remember you know talking about gender norms my dad thinks that like he's afraid i'll get attacked when i'm hiking like and so he's like do you bring a bat with you and i'm like no dad i bring bear spray because bears attack people but it's funny because i just um you know i have you know obviously been in an abusive relationship before but when i think about being on the street i really don't feel like pe i think people will look at me and they'll be like mm, not her like she looks really heavy <laughs> you know but i know that there's other people you know out there that um they would attack and it's uh so it's a different perception and i want to make it a safer place for people and i think that a lot of it comes from gender norms you know i think it's just becoming a men's health issue in terms of violence in terms of incarceration um we have this inability to deal with emotions it's more appropriate to go to a bar and get a drink than it is to get therapy you know i see ads it's funny looking for a new place to live and see people don't want you to smoke marijuana but you can walk in with like you know a kitchen or, or your your bathroom cabinet full of pharmaceuticals and that's okay <laughs> yeah you can be on all the ssris the antidepressants you want and hey, that that's fine but yeah jordan peterson style i mean isn't that how you deal with life <laughs> yeah like it's yeah, it, it it it's it's wild how all that all all that all that kind of works out. Um, yeah, 
I mean, it's something that I chose not to do. I don't like, again, like birth control or any kind of like antidepressants really haven't been my approach. And I have to say, I'm really happy with it because I was getting sick for a long time by listening to doctors that were pushing pharmaceuticals on me. And, you know, it was really nice the other day to walk in and kind of feel a little bit crazy because I was talking to uh, my doctor and she's like, do you still have symptoms? And I'm like, nope, I don't even know why I'm here, but I need to check it up. <laughs> Anyways, conversations that I think will continue. We probably should uh, wrap this up here. Thanks again, Ben, for joining me. Tell people where they can find you. Yeah, so you can find me on Instagram, my company, uh, Fortius Labs, F-O-R-T-I-U-S-L-A-B-S on Instagram. Uh, we provide um, online virtual injury rehab and prevention services uh, using exercise. We can find my personal Instagram at B-C-Y-L-E-E. -E. Yeah, lots of uh, cat content there that you can enjoy. And my name again is uh, Janet. I'm known as Rocky's Adventure over on the gram, rockiesadventure.ca. Um, invite you to get on my email list. I actually write out a lot of stuff about this. I'm trying to get off Instagram and put more uh, information directly out towards people that want to hear it. So I would love to have you join my newsletter. Please say hi. And thanks again for joining us.